Hey folks, this is Ben from Road to VR. We're here at SVVR 2017, and I am chatting with Matt from Immersion. Matt, what do you do at Immersion? So I'm the business development director for games and VR. And Immersion has a long history of working with haptics, and today they are showing us a new plugin for Unreal Engine 4 and soon to come to Unity that is all about trying to help developers uh, in VR and elsewhere make haptics more easily. Give us the, the overview. Uh, what's it called and what does it do? All right, so this is uh, something we call Touch Sense Force for game developers. Um, if we look at the landscape right now, we have three major VR platforms and HTC, Oculus, and then Sony with the PlayStation VR. And developers right now are, have, have incredible hardware at their fingertips to create great new haptics, but they have different APIs and different platforms and different hardware. And so we're creating a tool that will make it as easy as possible to deliver great haptics to gamers. So what is it like for a developer today using sort of the built-in tools available to them in Unreal Engine, for instance, to, to make a haptic effect? What is that uh, process like? For the most part, it's, it's being driven by APIs from the platforms. Um, so that looks essentially like programming code. And what we're trying to do is create a visual interface that's common amongst people doing audio or video editing that people are used to. It's a timeline-based approach to create great haptic effects. And so what you guys are doing is you're trying to, uh, you said the, the approach today is sort of programmatic. You guys are going visual, and the goal is let developers make haptics that are better and make them faster, correct? Yes. So if you look at our tool here, essentially you can bring in an animation, load it up, and you can add tracks for the different hardware platforms out there. So you can design at once for multiple platforms. And so in this case, uh, we're actually in Unreal Engine here. And down here you have all of the sort of different haptic uh, effects that are going to play for this glove animation. Can you play the glove for us? Yeah, so in real time, we're able to grab the hardware, hold it, feel it, hit play, run an animation, and I can feel all these different effects. And so this glove has all of these moving parts, and of course this is challenging because we can feel this on the controller, but I can't convey it to you through the video. But this animation as it plays, um, it's got a bunch of moving parts, like you see when Iron Man's uh, suit comes on him, and it's all this, there's these clicking, clacking sound effects. And in here, basically each one of these little moving parts has its own little specific effect. When the big parts of the glove move, you, you feel a bit more of a clunk, and when the little ones are going, it's a little bit more gentle. What is it like to create a haptic effect for an animation like this with your tool? Yeah, so when we talk to developers, their initial reaction is, wow, that must have taken days, right? Because the iteration process right now with haptics is, is uh, not especially efficient. Um, you have to write some code, then you have to play it back, test it, feel it. Um, this is something that we can do in 10 minutes or less. And it's interesting too because uh, you were talking about how you know the communication even of, of one person telling another person how they want the haptic effect to feel is hard, right? Because it's hard to say, well, I want the amplitude to be you know four. I don't, what does that necessarily mean? When you have it visually like this, you start to get a sense for, well, that shape's going to feel like this. So maybe when you're communicating to a fellow developer, well, let's let's have you know let's have an upward ramp and a couple of I don't know knife marks, whatever you might call these. It, it really closes that loop and makes uh, it uh, more of a design thing than, than a coding thing. Have you guys found uh, that you're starting to develop a language for talking about haptics based on the visuals? Yeah, I think that, as you described, it, it starts to come naturally. Once people start to see it, they start to think about it in this, in this way, it, it's a paradigm changer, right? So it's, it's ramp ups, it's um, I want to see some texture, right? I, I want that evenly spaced, something that feels more organic. Yeah, all these words start to come out when dealing with developers, and it's just a matter of people seeing this, it clicking, and then start to think, okay, I know how to describe what I want to feel now. And so you talked about how the system, I mean, so right now in this example, we're targeting the touch controllers, but if I wanted to have the same effect happen on the Vive controllers, for instance, it's literally as easy as copying, pasting, and saying, okay, instead of touch, Vive, right? And, and what, uh, what different controls are you supporting uh, for that cross-platform capability? So for right now, what we're showing here at the show is Oculus Touch controllers. Um, we've recently announced a deal with the Nintendo Switch, and so we're really excited, so you'll be able to add a Nintendo Switch support, and we'll be adding more hardware as the time goes on. We talked about also this ability to not just design the, uh, the haptics to match the animation, but also if you change the animation, do your haptics get all out of whack? So yeah, one of the exciting things about what we're doing within the Unreal Engine plugin is we're tying into their Notify system. So again, we're trying to speed up the iteration 
process. So if someone creates an animation and then you go design haptics for it and later in, in QA testing you find out that that gun needs to be balanced differently and you need to change the animation because the fire rate's changed, when you change um, the animation using the Notify system within Unreal, these links right here to the haptic effects will automatically adjust. So the one that's tied to this frame, if that frame is now a little bit later, it will trigger the haptic effect when that frame comes live. So yeah, that of course would cut down on the iteration time, meaning that you don't have to redesign all of these. I mean, you spend the time making complex effects, so you can do them quickly, and now you won't even have to redesign them any time you make a tweak to the animation or, or even just the speed of it. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, we're really trying to make it efficient for VR developers and game developers to develop for the, the platforms that are out there. We want to make it easy to take advantage of the hardware that's being rolled out right now, some really cool hardware, and overall trying to make it an efficient workflow for game developers. Yeah. And we're trying to tie into their current workflows. So if we know that someone's working within Unreal Engine using their Notify system, we're going to make sure that we tie into that workflow so it's easy for a developer to roll out great haptics. Uh, very cool, and when will developers be able to use this? So right now we're open to early access, so for developers that are working with the Unreal Engine and on, uh, again, the hardware platforms I mentioned, um, we're excited to work with you. And this is an Unreal Now, where else might developers see it? So it's in Unreal Engine currently, and we're going to be rolling out for uh, a Unity Engine plugin in Q3. Great, thank you, Matt. Appreciate awesome. it. Awesome, thanks, Ben.